emblematic is the adjective which best describes the Gran Sasso's true nature. The Gran Sasso is not just any mountain, but is the symbol of the entire Abruzzo region. Known as the Silent Giant, the 3000 meter peaks of Gran Sasso have long been a symbol of the region of Abruzzo and star of the sprawling Gran Sasso and Alagan Mountains National Park. From its peak, it is possible to admire the world territory, all the way to the Adriatic Sea, which embraces the rich coast. Today, an entire history involving saints and warriors over dozens of years is made accessible in this eco-journey called From Tirino to Gran Sasso, lands of saints and warriors. This eco-itinerary is a part of a larger project called Emblematic, in which nine European mountains, all linked by their connection to the Mediterranean Sea, took part. The Eco Journey proposes to follow the route created by the river, which begins in the mountain that overhangs it and eventually pulls out into the valley. A slow route which will allow us to visit some of the most beautiful and suggestive places and villages in Italy. It has a total length of almost 100 km and a vertical drop of 440 meters and is made up of eight stages. Let's start our journey. The starting point of this journey is the Tirino Valley. On the banks of the Tirino River, which is a forerunner to the mountains of the National Park of Gran Sasso. The Tirino River flows slowly in the middle of the valley and is considered one of the purest rivers of Europe and one of the most beautiful in Italy. The river is known also as Tritano, the ancient Greek name, which means triple source points, because it has three source points. The main one is Capo d'Acqua, that feeds the same lake with ancient submerged mills. The other two springs points are Presciano and Batormina, known as the lake. These karstic waters came from the Gran Sasso mountains and after a long way underground. By far, the best way to explore this stretch of the route is by floating down the Tirino River, via canoe or kayak. Il Bosso is an excellent local outfitter that leads guided river excursions and also e bike tours along the valley. Canoe and kayak experience on the Tirino is the best way to relax mind and body. On each canoe, there are qualified guides who will let you know the authentic knowledge of this magnificent river, surrounded by crystal clear water, lush vegetation, and typical river fauna. Thanks to sunshine penetrating deep into the water, its bed is a riot of aquatic plants. Another way to explore the valley is by bike, a relaxing and panoramic ride in one of the most evocative corners of Abruzzo, between crystal clear waters, villages and castles. Thanks to the presence of professional local guides, it is possible to know all aspects of flora, fauna, art and history. The itinerary passes through magnificent villages such as Villa Santa Lucia degli Abruzzi, a small and fortified village with less than 100 inhabitants, and the village of Ofena. In this area, the characteristic microclimate has allowed the cultivation of vines and olives. An excellent variety of Montepulciano d'Abruzzo is produced here. Near the town, there are some agriculture settlements, called pagliare, which means straw houses. The name is very illustrative of the nature of these settlements. mid mountains barn were used as straw storage, but also as workplaces during the summer. Much of the second stage follows historic routes used by shepherds over the centuries to move their flocks between the high and low plains to pasture, according to the season. This tradition 
known as the Transumanza, is one of the hallmarks of Abruzzo's rural culture and continues till today to on a much smaller scale. The route takes off from Villa Santa Lucia to Skirtofana and climbs the mountain slopes to Castel del Monte, one of the most picturesque hilltop villages in Abruzzo. Getting to Castel del Monte is a suggestive experience. After the long mountain road, the view suddenly opens and the fortified village appears. The country has always been dedicated to sheep farming. The green lands of Gran Sasso have allowed the breeding of thousands of sheep and to survive they brought the sheep from here to the warmer areas of southern Italy. Arts and crafts to do with the wool were carried out by the women of the village during the winter. The village of Castel del Monte, among the most beautiful of Italy, is a magical place, bewitched by festivals and secular rites, which have inspired people for millenniums. During the nights of the 70 and 80 of August, the witch night takes place, a festival bound to superstition and the credence of shepherds and farmers. The eco journey leaves the village of Castel del Monte and goes on to the heart of mountains. The plateau of Campo Imperatore is located at an altitude of 1,500 and 1,900 meters, with sparse and unique vegetation, some of which is typical of some oriental country steppes and is perfectly adapted for this environment. The plain of Campo Imperatore is the guardian of small natural pools of karst and glacial origin. Some are perennial, while others have a rather limited life and are connected to the melting period of the snowpack. Among this lake, one of the most famous is Racollo Lake. With its changing scenario, even today the Campo Imperatore Plateau is chosen by movie directors and producers to set their movies, video clips or commercials. With irresistible charm, the plateau is the scenario for lots of Italian and international movies masterpieces. The Italian director Sergio Leone shows it as substitute for the American sets for his spaghetti western with Bud Spencer and Terence Hill. This was the scenario for fantasy movies like Iago, Lady Oak, or for historical movies like In the Name of Rose, The American, or the Italian movie That is Life. Hiking and walking the upper plains of Gran Sasso is not for the inexperienced, so it's important to explore with an expert local guide for a safe and fun day on the mountain. Il Bosso, an excellent local outfitter, leads pleasant and evocative hikings through fascinating woods and valleys surrounded by the suggestive highest rocky peaks of Gran Sasso. During the winter it is possible to admire the whitewashed landscape of Campo Imperatore through easy snowshoe tour with the mountain guides. At the foot of Gran Sasso, surrounded by magnificent views, it is possible to enjoy a magical atmosphere characterized by the smell of mountain herbs and large grassy areas. Through the e-bike activity, it is possible to reach the most characteristic corners of plain. This area is called the Little Tibet of Abruzzo. The e-bike ride in Campo Imperatore is a breath of oxygen for body, mind, but also for heart. As a silent guardian of all the Tirino Valley and Gran Sasso Mountains, Rocca Calascio is the highest fortified outpost of Italy. Nestled in the rock, its crenellated towers transfer the mountain's profile as a lighthouse which leads the eye to it. The role of Rocca Calascio was to control the mountain roads of the transhumans and the world trade from the near villages. During the end of the 400th century, the Church of Madonna della Pietà was built next to the castle, an evocative place of meditation with suspended landscapes and an octagonal shape that was not so common at the time. At the foot of the fortress stands the small village of Calascio, 
it dates back to Lombardic dominations. From the top of Rocca Calascio, it is possible to enjoy a unique sunset. From spring to autumn, our company allows you to admire this beauty of nature and its sunset. Right here, while the sun gives way to the moon, fascinated by the pink of the sky, we will enjoy together the suggestive surrounding landscape at 1460 meters above sea level. We will live one night under a wonderful starry sky. The eco journey moves on from Rocca Calascio down to Castel Vecchio Calvisio, a fortified town that has roots in ancient Rome and the nearby village of Carapelle Calvisio. Both take their name from Calvisia, the ancient priestess that once guarded the temple dedicated to Venus, located on these mountain slopes. The entrance to Castel Vecchio Calvisio from one of its ancient gates seems like conquering the village after a long siege. The elliptic shape of the village has a double wall around it to protect the center. The structure of the village is unique, with narrow alleys, the so-called rue. Over time, the village, in a certain way, protected not only the village itself and its beauty, but also its lands, where the Adonis Fernalis still flourished. A mountain flower, believed instinct, was discovered in the fields all around the village. Today, the Adonis Vernalis is the symbol of a Castelvecchio Calvisio and continues to flourish every year. Fortified in white limestone, laid down likely on the crest of the hill, Santo Stefano di Sessano is one of the most beautiful villages of Italy. Its history goes back to the Roman period, when, as a pagus, it was named Sex Sanctio. Getting lost in its alleys, like in a medieval labyrinth, is perfect to discover all the friezes left by the Florentine families or by the shepherds. Santo Stefano di Sessanio was an important intersection for the wall trade. Black wool, called Carfagna, was produced here and is considered precious on the European market. This stage skirts the hillsides from Santo Stefano di Sessanio and through oak and pine groves above fields of wheat, lentils and saffron flowers. The trail reached the village of Barisciano, a medieval hamlet with roots in ancient Rome. The importance that the village had in the territory makes it relevant for local trade. The village was important also for sheep livestock and the production of goods. Today, the village still cultivates potatoes, wheat, lentils, saffron and almonds. This is one of the simplest and longest stages, which winds directly along the historic Tratturo Magno, or ship trail, once used to transport earths to southern Italy. At the castle of San Pio delle Camere, the path crossed the Tratturo Centurelle, which ran parallel, making it for centuries one of the most important mercantile crossroads in Abruzzo. Today, this stretch of the Tratturo Magno is a sleepy country path that leads to Navelli, famous for its precious saffron flowers. Even today, on the ancient Tratturo, it is possible to find some rural churches that offer refreshment to people of transhumance. Navelli is home to one of Abruzzo's most expensive local products, saffron. Known as Abruzzo's gold, this bright spice is collected from the flowers of crocus that bloom in the high plains in October and November. This territory is rich in history and flavors. Il Bosso organized guided hiking and e-bike tours to fully appreciate the villages and their traditions. 
during the activities that are testing based on saffron and typical organic products such as cereals and legumes. It is possible to cycle or walk towards the flat lands famous for the cultivation of the precious saffron. From here you can enjoy a magnificent view of Navelli and the enchanting territory of Bominaco, formerly called Momenaco. Here is the wonderful oratory of San Pellegrino, called the Sistine Chapel of Abruzzo, for the beauty of its fresco. From land of saints, scattered with historic churches and monasteries, this final stretch of the itinerary takes you to the land of warriors. Setting off from Navelli, the route completes a full circle back to the Tirino Valley, by way of Capestrano, a suggestive medieval village. The Tirino Valley is rich in history. Here, an ancient statue, known as the Warrior of Capestrano, was accidentally discovered in summer 1934, during the works in a vineyard. The sculpture, dating from the mid-6th century before Christ, is a male figure, with arms folded on his chest, in a military costume, a funerary statue of a warrior prince. The warrior of Capestrano is one of the most important icons of Abruzzo and its identity. In the main center of the village stands the majestic Piccolomini's castles, a Tuscan family. The castles date back to the 15th century, and the new lords of the Medici family rebuilt it in the late 16th century. The structure lies on a natural rock of the hill, and the castle is an L-shape with a moat and no external windows to better fortify the structure.